Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, fourth session on uh, VivaTrack today for the Canadian Cloud Summit. My name is Serge Tremblay. I'm your host for today, and I'm happy to introduce you Eve Abersat, uh, who's a, a great speaker who's going to introduce you or give you more information about how to start Viva Connection and how to extend it by using a SharePoint framework and how to build like a custom uh, adaptive card. So Eve, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Serge. Welcome everybody. My name is Eva Barsat and today you are talking about uh, Viva Connection extensibility. So everything related to the developer environment. I will share my screen right now. And I'm going to start. So thank you to the sponsor. Without them, uh, without the sponsor, we can't organize this kind of uh, of conference. Uh, I hope to be back on uh, on site and uh, in, uh, in presencial mode, so really soon. So maybe next year and uh, on site. So thanks for the to the sponsor. <coughs> My session code is two nine zero six three zero. So you can scan the um, the code and uh, go for this link if you want to submit uh, feedback, and you you have a chance to win. Uh, a $50 Amazon gift card. So thank you. If you have any feedback, feel free to reach uh, reach this link or the QR code. Today, starting with Viva Connections extensibility model, we are talking everything related to uh, building custom cards for the dashboard, custom adaptive cards with SharePoint framework and uh, all the development environment for uh, Viva Connections extensibility. My name is Eva Bersat. I'm a business applications consultant at uh, Sword Group. I'm based in Switzerland. Uh, I'm focused on Microsoft Cloud services like Microsoft 365, Azure, Dynamics 365, and the well-known Power Platform. I'm Microsoft MVP in the Office Development category. So I'm focused on SPFX development for SharePoint Online, uh, Viva Connection extensibility, Teams, uh, Teams application development with Team SDK, and so on. I'm also a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and basically uh, my background is related to the development. So basically SharePoint Framework, Team SDK, all the technology uh, related to the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem, Azure, uh, .NET, and so on. So feel free if you have any question, technical or functional question regarding this session, feel free to reach me out on Twitter, LinkedIn, or through my website. I'm answering every question uh, if, you, if you need more more information about how to do something specific uh, inside your project, or maybe you have a, a question on, for example, the APIs and how to do a specific task, feel free to reach me out. So the agenda for today, we will just a quick introduction about the Viva Connection dashboard, but the last session was really good. So basically uh, everything was explained in the functional uh, side. And after I will go through the technical uh, stuff, the card, quick view, external view, adaptive card extension to build some custom card. Uh, I will talk about the architecture. And uh, at the end, live demo, I will go quickly for the slides, just maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I will go through the demo. Um, I took a use case, basically how to display some um, company holidays to your user. And I build uh, a brand new, um, a brand new uh, adaptive card just for this session. So it's pretty, it's pretty fresh. So I will present you all the code stuff behind uh, this adaptive card. I will show you the the key, the the attention point on uh, how to do a specific task for Viva Connection dashboard um, adaptive card. So right now, as mentioned before, uh, we are talking about Viva Connection dashboard. You have the, because Viva Connection is a mobile first experience. Uh, you have the dashboard in the mobile Teams application, which is uh, on the screen, as you can see. Uh, you have the dashboard. Sorry, it's in French because my, my iPhone is in French and you can't switch uh, to other languages. So basically, uh, you see the da mobile dashboard in, in French. So you see you have the, the adaptive cards and you have also the web part to deploy on the, your home site to expose uh, your card inside uh, a SharePoint modern site. So basically, we are talking about this. Adaptive card extension are working on the mobile, uh, mobile part and on the SharePoint part. You have uh, one project for the both 
part. This is really, really important. You don't need to write the, the code twice. So basically you are, you are building once your card, you are deploying it and everything is ready for the mobile and desktop uh, experience. So to, to build custom card, uh, the, the main, uh, the main uh, framework to use is the SharePoint framework. And more globally, if you want to extend the experience in Microsoft 365, you need to use the SharePoint framework because you can extend Microsoft Teams, you can extend uh, SharePoint Online, and now more recently, Viva Connections and the card. So basically you take advantage of every um, uh, technical uh, stuff inside the SharePoint framework, like SSO, um, le, the automatic, uh, the, the, you host the code in the app catalog. So every single advantage of the SharePoint framework is here for Viva Connections. So the SharePoint framework is uh, the main framework to use to extend Viva Connections. And now I'm switching to the technical stuff. Uh, for, for example, when you, when you are building a new card, you have three concepts. You have the card, you have the quick view, and the external view. And uh, first, I'm talking about the card. The card is basically the first experience you have in the dashboard. When you see uh, an adaptive card, you see the card. This is what we call the card. It provides just uh, quick information about uh, what is your card about. So for example, uh, a title, maybe a description, and uh, some other information to use your. It's uh, in the in a project when you build a, a new adaptive card, it's uh, mandatory. It's required. Every single project needs to have at least a card. As you can see on the screen, my my demo, my live demo will be this uh, this holiday uh, this holiday card. I've built uh, just a simple company holidays card. When you can click on uh, the card or on the boot button see all to see the next company holidays uh, based on your location. So for example, in my, if I'm in Switzerland, I will get all the company holidays based on uh, Switzerland and so on. Uh, I, as you can see, you have multiple size. You have the medium size, you have the large size, and you can customize a lot of things and you have multiple templates. So basically, as you can see on the screen, uh, it's Viva Connection uh, Adaptive Card. You have some multiple templates as, as showed in the last session. Uh, you, you, have, you have some uh, some some side to build uh, and to, to, to copy paste your code. But in this session, we will focus on the developer side. We are building uh, from scratch. Now, <coughs> the quick view. The quick view is an advanced uh, view uh, of the card. So basically, uh, you trigger the, the this this quick view from a, a button, for example, or directly to click on the card. Uh, it provides um, advanced details about the functionality. So, for example, if you have a card with a title and description, if you click, you have an advanced view. As you can see on the screen, it's a, it's a, just an example of a, a travel a travel card with the quick view, which is an advanced view of what you can uh, display on the card view. So it, it gives you some advanced details. It's optional. You can have just one card if you want. If you want just to, to display some basic information, you can still you can st have just one card. And if you want to have multiple quick view, you can. If you want to have multiple card view, you can too. But the card is mandatory. Quick view isn't. And at the end, we have the external view. Basically, external views uh, can be uh, whatever you want inside uh, Microsoft 365 or more globally, uh, any app. So basically, it could be the approval apps. So it could be a Microsoft 365 app, a website, a custom app. It's just an external view of your card. So basically, uh, if your application have API, you are building your adaptive card extension. We'll see uh, just after. And in a uh, in some uh, in in the flow of the of your card, maybe sometimes you will get redirected to the full experience, because sometimes you don't want to provide a full experience inside the card. You just uh, provide some uh, key uh, functions, and after, uh, if the user wants to have the the whole capacity, the whole experience of the, your application, he go to the um, full experience application. So, for example, the approvals and uh, and so on, and basically. Uh, when you, you are going to the external view, you switch out of the dashboard context. And the external view is optional. You can have uh, just an API and you, you create a card. Uh, a, a full a whole experience application isn't required. 
it's up to you to have uh, if you want uh, an application or just an API and to to interact with uh, with this API inside your card. It's up to you. This is what I, I'm talking about. You have see on the left you have the dashboard. After we have the quick view, which is advanced details of the of the card. And after we can go through an in, in Teams app. So basically you can stay inside Teams and redirect the user to the Teams app or directly inside your browser. For example, if you want to switch to a wall experience with uh, all the features, you can. But you can also use deep linking inside uh, Teams to redirect the user to your Teams app. This is possible. And now we are talking about ACES, Adaptive Card Extensions. So this is a new component type uh, inside the SharePoint framework to, to, to express the, the user experience in the, in the dashboard. So basically you are using Adaptive Card Extension to build your custom card. And with the ACE, you, you are building cards and quick views and so on. So basically, as I mentioned before, you have all the goodness of the, of the SharePoint framework. So basically you have a, uh, all, all, all stuff relating to graph, uh, SharePoint API, and and so on, the SSO, uh, the app catalog code hosting, and so on. But it's like the SharePoint framework. For example, the UX is constrained. You have no full control of the DOM, for example. Uh, you need to use Adaptive Card Framework components because we are using Adaptive Card behind uh, the, the SharePoint framework is managing the logic, API call, and so on, but we are still using uh, adaptive card JSON structure to build our uh, adaptive card. And basically, uh, when you use the SharePoint framework, you are rendering the ACE uh, natively on the supported client. So basically, it's a native render. This is really powerful. And the adaptive card uh, structure and uh, JSON structure is here to, to build the, the card. And after, SharePoint framework is managing the, the logic, the API calls, but it's rendering. The render is native. This is what you, you need to understand. And now the architecture at the end, we have uh, first the view. Basically, uh, this is a, a description of the content of a, of a card of a quick view. Uh, you have multiple templates. So basically, when you are building uh, an ACE, you have three templates. And uh, basically, the developer will focus on the data model, lifecycle, API call, uh, rather than uh, the user interface. So basically these templates are pre-made templates and you just use it uh, with um, with uh, the, the quick, uh, with your quick, um, it's really quick. So basically you deploy this template and it's ready to use. You have the basic card template, image card template and primary text template. In my demo, I will use the primary text template. And all these templates generate a full uh, ready to use project. And after you can customize uh, based on your needs and, uh, and so on. And each template expose different parts of the card. So basically basic card templates provide just a quick title. Image card, image card templates provide a placeholder for a picture and so on. You have the, the, all the templates are providing some different parts and you can customize the information you want to expose in the, in the card. So this is really interesting uh, because you are you have ready to use template like the SharePoint framework, for example, for web part. But in this case, it's really ready to use. You just need to build your logic, your API calls behind, and it's ready to use. After we have uh, for 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 those who are um, friendly with uh, React, you have in the in the ACE you have uh, the state. It represents part of the app that can change. It's similar to the React state, state, but it's not. For those who are working with React, for example, it's uh, it's like it's the same way that you use, for example, when you when you are building a web part with React. It's the same way, but it's not a React state. Microsoft has made his own ACE state, but it's not the React state behind. And uh, basically, developers can use the set state like. You, when you are building some web parts inside uh, the SharePoint framework, you have the set state API to update the state, uh, the state across your view. The, the main thing is that the state is available in every view. This is a global state. So basically you can uh, access it for your quick views, your card views, and uh, wherever you want. So basically your state is global of the project. And at the end, we have the navigator. 
So the navigators, uh, you have two navigators. You have the card view navigators and the quick view navigators. So it's manage the view in a stack. So basically you have a stack and you manage view and uh, you manage what you want to display to the user. So basically the navigation between the view. Uh, for example, when a user click on the card, you are displaying the quick view and maybe you are you have multiple quick view, uh, quick view, sorry, and you are uh, displaying to the user for uh, the navigators. And basically you have uh, the current view that is displaying to the user. And after you can switch uh, to some view, for example, to, to provide uh, more details or advanced uh, feature if you want. But all this, this card, quick view uh, and, and card, need to be registered. Basically, I will show you in the on init method, you need to, to register all this view. And so basically you need to register everything before using it. So basically you need to register. If you have a multiple card view, you need to register them. If you are using multiple quick view, it's mandatory to register everything because using it inside the on init method. Uh, I think I've done with this and now live demo because I have I'm really I'm I have really uh, yes, I'm on time, so 15 minutes. So I will switch back to my, my computer right now to be more live. So basically, I will show you what is the, the goal of uh, my, my demo. So as you can see, I'm inside Teams, Viva Connections, I've deployed Viva Connections. Uh, for example, I will show you what is my dashboard look like. So you see, I have built a lot of uh, different uh, adaptive cards. So basically, it's just to showcase uh, what are the capabilities. Uh, you have, you, I have copy, copy paste from um, from the adaptive card.io as we, we saw uh, just in the last session. But I've made, for example, this card. This is what you are talking today, the company holidays card. So you see you have a, a card and I can see what is the next uh, company holidays based on my on my location. So for example, uh, on, in Switzerland, the, the next company holiday is on the 15th April, Vendredi Saint is the next company holidays. But I have also, for example, a, a graph directory just it's a, it's an adaptive card extension made with Shepard framework. Uh, you have, for example, my groups. You can see all your groups and you can have a quick view with the details. For example, you have also um, out of the box uh, cards from Microsoft, for example, Viva Learning. Uh, you have, for example, this card I've made just to showcase how to interact with Graph API and Microsoft Team message. So you can send a message through this card to a user. For example, it's just to, to showcase uh, some uh, some <clears throat> some basic um, tasks with adaptive card extension and SharePoint framework. For example, in this in this card, I'm using uh, an Azure AD protected Azure function. So basically, you you see it's a third party API for SharePoint framework, and I'm calling the the, the Azure function through uh, Azure AD security. And for example, you see you have approvals. You have, for example, this card, which is a showcase of uh, HoloLens. For example, you see you can you can have really advanced uh, user experience. So you see it's really it's really uh, amazing to see what you can build with adaptive card. You see you have a, a picture, a slider, carousel. Uh, for example, for an event like Ignite, you see you have the, the schedule. For holidays, it's uh, another holiday uh, holiday card, but it's really more advanced in this case. Uh, you have a web link, you have, uh, and so on. So you see, you have uh, multiple uh, capabilities, but in my case, you see, I have this card, and in my demo, I will show you how to build, what are the, the attention point, how to build this kind of stuff. So basically, if I click on see all, you see, you have a, a quick view, and in this quick view, you have the details of your upcoming um, holidays. So basically, I'm based in Switzerland, so it display me Switzerland holidays for 2000, uh, for 2022, 1st January and so on. And in the card, I have only the next company holiday. And in the quick view, I have every company holidays based on my location. And if I click on this link, uh, it go to my site, but it could be, for example, your timesheet system or your ERP or so on, uh, whatever. And if I go to the SharePoint site, because I, if I want to edit all this card, I need to go to the SharePoint site and not in Teams, it's not available. So I will edit this card to show you to show you the property. Uh, I'm switching in desktop mode. Uh, I'm editing this card and I've made, you see, a lot of properties. So basically it's a medium size in my case. Uh, I've put properties like card title. 
the card icon, the country. But in my case, I've, I'm just using the audience targeting to provide the card to the right user. So basically, this is not uh, the, um, the, the full uh, advanced uh, card with, for example, graph call to, to check the office location and so on. So basically, this is really a uh, really in simple scenario. You have the year, list name, because I'm, so I'm uh, fetching from a, a SharePoint list. Just to be to be to be simple, because uh, in, if you want to build the full full card, you for example add the graph uh, call to call uh, the office location uh, property inside Azure AD, and uh, after you are uh, fetching the data from your ERP system or timesheet system and so on. I have uh, multi, it's just to showcase the fetch method. So for example, I'm using uh, SP HTTP client, or if you want to use the MS Graph client or the PNPGS library. So, for example, it's just to showcase some um, multiple ways to um, to fetch the data inside a, a card, and after I have a property to just uh, redirect the user to a URL. It, it could be your timesheet system uh, and so on. So basically, this is what we are talking about. And now I will just discard this view. And now. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. So this is really developer part right now. We are switching to Visual Studio. Uh, right now, uh, I will just go to the main difference between um, a SharePoint framework uh, project uh, when you are building, for example, a web part. Uh, I'm not talking about what you have by default in every SharePoint framework project. I will focus on the code you, you need to update or to build for, for this uh, adaptive file extension. So as you can see, you have the, the, the same structure like when you are building a web part project, but the, the main difference is in the ECRC file uh, folder. Sorry, you have the adaptive card extension folder and my adaptive card extension. You see the structure, it's really different from a SharePoint framework because you have multiple folders. You have assets folders for the assets. So basically you have the SharePoint logo in a SVG file, for example. You have the card view. In my case, I have only one card view. This is the card view uh, you can uh, you see, you saw just before. You have, sorry, the lock is for local, localize your um, your adaptive card. In my case, I have made the localization in French and English. You have the quick view, and I have built some services to help me. So, for example, the graph service to make some API call to Microsoft Graph helpers. For example, I have some uh, some helpers for for the dates, for 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 formatting dates and so on. And I have also also a holiday service, which is basically. Uh, just a service to call the SharePoint API to call to check my list, my list of uh, holidays. After we have also manifest file, which is basically the same as the every SharePoint framework um, project. But you see in uh, this manifest, you have the dashboard supported host. So basically this is uh, what you are talking about dashboard. We are in uh, adaptive card extension and the supported host are dashboard and SharePoint web part. Basically, you see, I have pre-filled some properties to be available by default. Uh, the first entry point of this pro uh, project, basically, it's uh, the proper, just to show you the property pan. This is the same, strictly the same features than the SharePoint Framework web part project. So for example, you see, I have uh, the title, the icon property, the country, the year, the list name, get method. It's a drop down and uh, the text field for the URL, sorry, for redirecting the user when they, they click on uh, see more. This is pretty simple. No change with when you are building a SharePoint framework uh, web part. The entry point is this file. This file is the entry point of your adaptive card extension. So for example, uh, you have the adaptive card extension.ts file. In this case, you see I have my properties. I have my state. This is not a React state, but I have my state. So for example, I have my items. The next item that will be displayed inside the card view. And I have the office location. If I want to use a Microsoft Graph to call the office location property from the Azure AD for Microsoft Graph, it's available. You see, you have the card view registry ID, which is the ID 
of your card view and you have also the quick view registry ID, which is the ID of your quick view. In my case, I have only one card view and one quick view, so I have two uh, two ID. If you if you want more more quick views, more card view, you need to create a registry ID for each of them. After I have some uh, private properties like holiday service, my graph service, my data helper, and you have this important method, the on init method. In this on init method, for example, I'm set up a PNPJS, for example, I'm initializing in the state, my services, and you have these two parts. This is really important. You need to register your card view and your quick view. So basically, I'm registering through the card navigator my card view. You see, I'm instancing my card view and I'm instancing my quick view. And after that, I can use the card view and quick view inside my project. I'm just uh, making, uh, I'm fetching the data and after I am go back. And with that, I'm ready to use my data and uh, my card and quick view. Fetch data is just uh, the fetch data based on the on the method. For example, if you are using a uh, SharePoint API, PNPJS, and and so on, so it's just really really simple fetch method I've built. You have the title of your of your card, the property. Basically, by default, you have the HVG icon of SharePoint. I know you have load property, pan resources, and all lifecycle method render card. You see. Get property pan configuration and, for example, on property pan field changed. When you have a change inside the property pan, I'm just refreshing the, the card and I'm fetching the data again. So, for example, I'm based on two property to, to refresh my card when I switch uh, some property and update the, the property pan. This is the entry point of your uh, adaptive card extension. Uh, now, just go to the card view, so to show you the card view. Card view is really different from the SharePoint Framework uh, web part or other project like this, because in this uh, in this file, you have the card button methods. So basically, you, you expose a button. In my case, it's the quick view button. When I click on this button, I, I will get the quick view. You have the style. It's a positive in my case. The action type is quick view. And, and for example, I have the parameter, which is my quick view registry ID. So you see, it's really not um, advanced development stuff. You just provide a, a quick view button with some uh, properties and it's ready. After we have the data. So basically, each temp, as I mentioned before, each template has some placeholders. So basically, in my case, I have the primary text, which is what I call the title and the description. And based on my state, for example, if my next item uh, is not found, for example, if the list was deleted or something like this, or undefined, I'm just displaying no data and please update the audit date list in the uh, property pan, for example. And if it's okay, I just put the value of my state and just putting a single description. So this is all to expose some data inside uh, the, the, the template. So for example, if you, are, if you use um, image template, you will uh, have the capability to uh, provide a picture or like this. It's based on the template. In my case, primary text as I call the title and the description at the bottom of the card. And for example, in this case, when you click on the card, you have the lifecycle method on card selection. And in this case, it's a quick view. And I'm putting the quick view registry ID to just showcase uh, my quick view. So basically when you click on see all button and on the card, you display the quick view. This is really, uh, really simple card because you don't have so much to do. The, the most interesting thing, the, the lock is not really relevant because it's just the, the translation. You see it's the localization I've made in French, French, uh, Switzerland and uh, for US, but the main, really main thing is a quick view. And in the SharePoint framework adaptive card extension project, you have this folder quick view and you have a second folder, a subfolder called template. And you have also a TS file for the type quick code. And you have also this quick view template. And what is inside on your, if you, if you think uh, clearly, this is my adaptive card, you see? This is my adaptive card JSON structure. So basically, uh, I'm creating a JSON file with my adaptive card structure. 
And with the capability of the Sharpen framework, you see, I can inject my data inside. So basically, with the capabilities of the Sharpen framework, you are building, for example, your adaptive card for adaptive card.io, you are building your stuff uh, without writing code and so on. You are pasting this inside your template and after you are binding and injecting the data. So for example, in my case, I've built a simple uh, quick view with uh, with adapted card.io, made some customization, and in my case, for example, I'm injecting the country, I'm injecting the year, and in this case, you see, I have the capability to f to loop through multiple uh, multiple templates uh, for for the items. So basically, you see, you have the data. This is a property called dollar data, and I'm injecting all my items. And in this case, I'm providing, you see, a template. It's not, uh, I'm not providing for every, uh, for every items. I'm providing just a template, and after he will loop through the items and display me uh, one template per, uh, per per item. So basically, I have a colon set. This is adaptive card uh, JSON structure. This is basically uh, what you can uh, recreate on your side for adaptive card.io. It's really, it's really quick, really simple. It's a really simple example. And in the quick view, you will see it's really, it's really simple because in my case, for example, I'm just using uh, the items, the URL, country, and year. So basically, this is uh, really what I need to populate my quick view. And you have a lifecycle method called data. And in this method, I'm returning all the properties. So for example, all the properties stored in my state. So for example, the items, URL, country, year. And after, you have this specific method template. In this specific method, you can return uh, a file or if you want, you can return JSON code directly if you want. You, you have the two options. If you want to return a JSON, JSON file, you can do like this, or you can write directly, return, and you put your JSON code as a string, and you inject, uh, if you want, your, your variables and your data inside. I prefer to use just a, a single file because it's more clear. Because when you are writing code inside, uh, when you are writing your adaptive card code inside uh, this method, your your file will be really big. So basically, I prefer to use just a, a single uh, template file, and I put everything inside uh, this. You see, it's really it's really simple. It's really clear. You you have a, a clear separation between the items, and uh, it's really good. Now. We have the quick view, and after I will just show you some some of my services because it's really simple. I have, for example, a graph service, which is basically a graph service to get some location. So basically, it's really a common common use case. It's uh, it's a graph service to get the office location on the Azure ID, for example, to get a site ID, SPO site ID uh, for graph. You have the the get holidays for the MS Graph client, for example, and so on. But Graph is not really relevant for you. Maybe the holiday service is more relevant. This is my interface for this uh, service. You see, you have just a title, a date, and a display value. I have some method, get holidays, get holidays v2 for the PNP JS and so on. Uh, get next item to get the next item to display to the card view. And to show you the whole, uh, the whole service, I'm using the SharePoint API. So, for example, in, in this case, I'm using the SP HTTP client, which is uh, available inside the SharePoint framework, like the MS Graph client. And uh, you see, it's really easy to use this kind of API to f make your API calls uh, and so on. So basically, in my case, I'm just using the SP HTTP client. I'm using the same with PNP JS, for example. If you if you are if you are user more more friendly with PNP JS. To request your 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 list and to update some uh, some item inside, you can use pnpjs. It's uh, it's up to you. Just a quick uh, next item function to 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 retrieve the, the next item to display. And uh, I'm using moments.js to format the date. It's pretty simple. I have a helper for that, so I'm just uh, using moment, uh, the moments.js library to make all my all my uh, my format uh, date formatting and so on. Uh, and basically, this is not for, for this kind of project. I'm using moments for every project uh, based on SharePoint Online and SharePoint Framework. So basically, this is a really good um, 
library if you want to to, to format dates to to convert uh, in the in your current um, time zone and so on this is really uh, interesting to use moment.js uh, this is for, for moment.js is just sorry in the in the package you have uh, uh, this library moment.js uh, you just uh, install it for npm and this is really useful when you are dealing with a lot of dates like this uh, this adaptive card when you want to make some uh, nicely formatted date and and so on this is really uh, interesting uh, basically, this is uh, this is really related to the adaptive card extension. And uh, as every SharePoint framework project, uh, but maybe for those who are really uh, friendly with that, you have every single uh, configuration file. For example, the package the package the solution the JSON, where you are providing all the information when you deploy your adaptive card extension as a package. So, for example, the i package ID, uh, the name the version, the developer name and so on. Uh, if you deploy to Azure storage, so basically you have the same file than the, the SharePoint framework the VS Code uh, file, SharePoint, where your, your package will be generated. Uh, you have the .git inner, you, every single file from the SharePoint framework is here. It's not really different. And uh, basically, if you want to run this adaptive card in my case uh, it's the same than uh, other uh, SharePoint framework uh, projects so basically you need to 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 put gulp serve for example and for example in my case i will showcase this project in the workbench to show you how to debug uh, that so i will go back to the dashboard every single SharePoint site has the well-known workbench debug your project so basically when you have a project you can debug your project this includes uh, web parts this includes uh, for example framework extension and this includes also adaptive card extension so basically it takes sorry it takes a little bit time sometimes to to serve but maybe when i'm waiting on that the for example if you see on the on the workbench you have also the same uh, you see, you have the same uh, dashboard feature. Uh, for example, you can uh, check, uh, for example, a Teams app. You see, you have, you can try and you can debug everything inside the workbench. So this is uh, really nice for developers to test or maybe test some uh, some adaptive cards. So for example, in this case, uh, you can showcase, uh, for example, an app inside uh, a Teams app. Sorry, inside uh, the workbench. I will go back. Oh. It's debugging. Sorry, takes some some time because uh, I have a. It's pretty a pretty big project, but uh, on my side it may be a medium or small project. But sometimes it takes some time to debug and to to compile everything. But it will works. Just to show you the the debug process. But it's still debugging. Oh, sorry, it's. Uh, right. Sorry, it takes some time. It's the demo effect. <laughs> it's uh, it's slower than uh, expected. And uh, just to to remind uh, something, when you are building some um, some adaptive card ex extension, when you want to interact with a card, you need to be in preview mode. So basically, in my case, I can't interact. You see, I, I have no interaction. So I need to switch in preview. And after, you see, I can uh, interact. So basically, if I go to, for example, Another kind of card, for example, the dashboard, maybe a web link, for example. You see, if I go to the settings and I'm putting, for example, the Google website, I can click on it, you see. And basically, you need to be on preview mode to make the interaction. And maybe, yes, it's built. So basically, you see, you will see when I go to the dashboard section, I can see, you see, can see my adaptive card extension and we are going to uh, display this adaptive card in debug mode. So this is really, uh, really nice to debug. Same way, same purpose than the SharePoint framework web part to debug. Uh, just to show you what is behind this, this web part because it's, uh, it's really simple. I've made, in my case, you see, just for example, a switch around holidays uh, list. So basically, this is a Microsoft list. Uh, you see, you have all my my holidays with a date, 
and uh, I'm using moment GS because the date for uh, the date formatting inside uh, the date format when you are retrieving uh, these dates from the SharePoint API, you have uh, it's an ISO format and you need to, to cast it and to cover make some uh, conversion to have uh, a friendly uh, display name and uh, friendly uh, formatted date. So I think I'm done because I have uh, only uh, 40 minutes. So basically I, I'm done with that. I understand it was really quick because basically um, I'm doing a lot of uh, long workshop, like two hours to build uh, from scratch uh, some adaptive card extension. But in this session, it was just to showcase uh, the, the main points and the attention points to, to maybe start building your own uh, adaptive cards and maybe uh, you will get uh, a better understanding if you if you if you come to my in some of my workshop when I doing some two hours uh, uh, workshop and uh, we are building from scratch a little bit uh, a little uh, adaptive card or web part. So this is really it was a quick session. So if you have any question, you can ask me now because I'm I'm finished. I have finished my session, so feel free to ask and maybe uh, I'm just checking the chat and uh, just after. I think there is no question, and uh, if not, uh, thank you so much for for having me, and uh, maybe.